Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So before we get started, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I am aware I look ridiculous in this hat. However, it's Christmas and I love it. <laughs> so you're going to have to put up with me looking like this for today's reading. And also I wanted to let you know before we get going that I will be taking a break from readings as of the 24th of December for a couple of weeks. So if you're wanting a private reading, contact me prefer preferably by the 22nd and I can squeeze you in on the 23rd. Um, if you're wanting a private reading and you don't want to have to wait a while before getting one. So if you're interested, the email address is below and it's in the intro of the reading as well. So yeah, I just wanted to let you know that before I just disappear for two weeks. Um, so today's reading is going to be a you versus them reading. I'm just doing the one today, but I am going to keep doing the pick of cards as well. I figure doing both is probably covers a lot of different scenarios. Um, so today's just going to be the one. It's going to be a general and I'm just going to dive right in. Okay, so just bear in mind that they are general and they won't resonate for everyone. Okay, okay, so let's start with your side of the reading. I'm going to call it your side of the reading, but as always, you could resonate more with the other side, so just bear that in mind. So your feelings today, we have the Eight of Wands with the King of Pentacles. So I, your side of the reading today is very different from what we've been getting in you versus thems for a while. So for this side of the reading, I feel like you are, first of all, very busy or you feel very busy. Maybe you're very, I almost feel like you've, you're very focused on practicalities right now, on the material world, on your finances, on your business, on your home life, your stability, things more of a practical nature rather than an emotional one. But I think you're busy and I think you've got a lot going on and I think that your focus is in one direction as opposed to scattered thinking. I feel like you're on your way to stability. You're on your way to, you know, feeling very settled, content in your life. I think that some of you may already be there or be at that point where you feel that way. But I think that you are very much taking charge of what you need to take charge of, your responsibilities, your obligations. But I don't think that this is, you know, chores. <laughs> you know, it's not, I don't think you're bored. I don't think that it's a drag. I think you're actually enjoying how you're feeling by giving your focus to things that stabilize you and keep you grounded. So I feel like you're more grounded at the minute. And I think that you have perhaps even shifted your focus away from this situation and put it onto other things. Because I think of the way that it makes you feel and the control it perhaps gives you back in your life. But I can see that you haven't really got a lot of time to dwell right now. And I think this has been really good for your energy and your well-being. I will say this though, the focus has been on yourself, right? You're prioritizing your well-being, yourself, your health, your, your world, your bubble, whatever you want to call it, whatever part of that it is that you have been prioritizing, you have been putting yourself first rather than other people. And I think along with that, maybe a bit of guilt because you have been prioritizing yourself and you know that you've had to push some things to the side in order to be able to do that. But I think it's because you've been protecting this. You know, if you've managed to get here or you are on your way to getting here, you have something to protect. It could have taken you a long time to get to this point. And so now that you're at that point, you're saying to yourself, nothing will destabilize me. Nothing will ruin this for me. Nothing will you know, tear me down. So I think you've almost put a bit of a fortress around yourself out of protection, but with that comes maybe a little bit of guilt. Now, when it comes to this situation, you may be feeling guilty 
regarding the other person because you've had to push them aside or push them away or you have put up boundaries you (laughs) I keep coming back to this so I'm gonna say it again I mean you haven't heard me say this I've said it to myself but as I was doing your reading raise your standards now I think you already have raised your standards I think it's past tense now but with that is coming guilt now this is a very typical quality for people pleasers when you are a people pleaser and you lay down boundaries and start to say no rather than yes all the time guilt can be a side effect of doing that for the first time because it's in your nature to actually help to be there for others to support to listen to whatever it is to make room for other people and if you've stopped doing that or at least limited how much you're doing that you may feel a bit of guilt but I don't think it's necessary none of this this all looks very healthy to me this looks very very good and it it, it comes back to that um that idea that you can't give to others until you have something to give And the only way you have something to give is if you do things like this, where you prioritize yourself and you take care of yourself and you make sure that you're protecting your stability and that you put in the effort to get to a stable place in your life. And sometimes the only way you can do that is by distancing yourself from other people or circumstances in your life that potentially destabilize you when you entertain them. Now, this relationship could have destabilized you or it could have caused instability in your life. And so I think that that's where the boundaries came from. That's where the prioritizing came from when it came to yourself. You know, you're like, this is destabilizing me. This is not doing me any favors. This is affecting my health negatively. I have to take a step back. But there's a bit of guilt there. But I think that it's, it's a reminder as well that you're not responsible for anyone but yourself, you know, unless you have kids, of course. You're not responsible for whether or not someone else is stable in their lives, you know. And, and there are obviously exceptions to that. But I think, again, you can't stabilize someone while you are not stable yourself so I think you understood that you took a step back you prioritized you you put your focus into things that made you feel more in control and I think you're well on your way to getting to that point where you feel like this some of you are already there which is really nice to see now this person potentially the person you're dealing with, unless it goes the other way around. They have the four of wands with the tower card. So immediately with the tower card, that's unpredictable energy, right? That's building, but not necessarily on a solid foundation. Now they do have the four of wands as well, but this is very opposite energy. You know, this is stable, solid, secure, long term this is building on a rocky foundation and have it fall apart five minutes after you've built it it's jenga you know you take one brick out and it all falls to bits so it's it feels a bit high and low so this person could be experiencing some highs and then some low lows at the minute you know it's all extreme And I also feel like this person potentially could have a foundation that has fallen apart or is falling apart. They are, or they could be in the process of rebuilding right now, but it, it feels very different to where you are. And I think that you have an awareness of that. So this person, it's very extreme what they're experiencing. And that's not to say it's their fault. It's not to say that it, you know, it could be something they've caused. It could be something that's happened outside of their control. 
we're, you know, we're not to know that and it will be different for everyone anyway. But I think that the point is, is that, you know, having this around this would only send you the same way, right? And I think that actually what you're doing is benefiting this situation without you really knowing. Because again, it's... When... Think about it this way. When you are feeling sad and down and low, what tends to help you is someone who is optimistic, who can help you see things in a more positive light, someone who's in a different space completely, someone who, you know, is feeling more stable at a stable point in their lives. That's what usually helps to bring you out of that or start to help you look at things from a different in a different way. Now, if both parties are in that low space, you're just going to stay there, right? Because there's nothing to counteract it. So I feel like you doing what you've done is actually helping the situation and maybe that can bring some of you that feeling of peace and, and release some of that guilt, knowing that even if you have been at a distance from this person, even if you have had to pull back, it, it's benefiting this person more than maybe even they realise at this point. You know, oftentimes in relationships, we are, you know, pulling each other up, you know, and taking it in turns to do so. And, you know, as well, that only works if everyone's willing, but you get my point. So I feel like you're that person right now that's pulling the other person up, but you're not necessar necessarily having to communicate with that person or act on it in order to do it. It's just sort of setting the tone. And I think it, it feels like it's at that stage, you know, it's at that stage where it's like you either come with me or you get left behind. It's at that point where I feel like you are, you're kind of, because you've raised your standards, you're kind of saying you either join me up here or you stay where you are. Neither choice would necessarily be wrong. And it would just be a reflection of where both people are at in their lives at the time. But I think that's what you're having to do, maybe with multiple connections in your life, in order to keep what you have now protected. And I think that that's okay. I think that's exactly what you should be doing. And I think that's what's working. Now, this person does have hopeful so I feel like this person is hopeful at a new beginning. They're hopeful at a new start with you. They they are wanting to plant the new seed. And, you know, with this energy as well, it's that recognition of I'm willing to nurture it in order to make it grow again. So we've kind of got this, that this is all connected because this to me suggests this awareness perhaps that this person has that it could go either way that it could crumble very quickly or that it could turn into something quite long term but it all comes down to how much they nurture it and how much you would nurture it how much effort would be put into the relationship so this person's having this awareness i think right now of that it there's no guarantee that this particular situation would be successful given whatever's happened between the two of you before or what's led up to this moment. But they are optimistic that it would, that there's potential, there's possibility, there's a, an opportunity for this to be rebuilt. And I do think it's rebuilt because the tower and the four of what it feels very much like this is an old situation that has the opportunity to almost be recycled. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. It could be recycled, but in a new way. You know, it could be recycled into something else, into something different, something better and more substantial. And we also have mirroring. 
so like I was saying, it's good that one person here is very much in that solid space, perhaps with a lot of energy right now, because that is creating and forming a foundation or the opportunity for one. But I really, I just don't feel like it's your focus. You're obviously watching this reading today, but I don't feel like it's where your focus is right now. So let's look at the blockages. You have the Ace of Pentacles with the Page of Wands. Yeah, so this is what, what initially gave me that feeling of raising your standards. Now, kind of feel like this is the other person and I will explain why later on in the reading. But this is, they're very much in a fiery based energy right now, which <laughs> can be good for action, but it can also be impulsive. It, it's not always thought through. It's unpredictable, like I was saying at the beginning. It doesn't always, it's not always stable, right? And then I feel like there's you with this Ace of Pentacles. Because I think this is what you're looking for. This is what you want. This is what you are attracting in to your life. And what we know pentacles are stable, solid, in many ways predictable. You know, they're planned, they're thought through. Steps are taken slowly, but that's why they end up being successful. And then this page of wands is here and it's like, it's... It, First of all, it's a page, it's it's young, it's youthful, but it can be immature. It's fun, it's definitely fun, but it's not, it's not usually something that grows. It's not something that, that is there for the long haul. And I think that that's where the block is. Because you have here big dreams with loving. So I think this, again, this is my point. You have high standards. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, I think a lot of the time we confuse having standards with being high maintenance. And I don't think it's the same thing. I think we just, we sometimes set the bar so low that we experience a lot of things that we, we don't really want and we wouldn't choose to have or choose to go through. That's why standards are important because once you understand what you want, those standards, those boundaries need to be there in order for you to only invite in what can meet those standards, right? So I feel like you've got high standards, you have got, you, you understand what will make you happy at this point and you understand more I think about what you deserve and that's what you want and that's what you hope for and that's what you daydream about but I think the blockage here is that perhaps this person isn't quite at that point or at least from your perspective this person isn't at that point so this person's blockage, okay, so we've got, I can see this being a few different things. We've got the magician with the moon. So we're getting a lot of major arcanas on this side of the reading, which is probably the other person, right? So the magician and the moon, I feel like, first of all, I think there's a little bit of confusion over what what they're going to do about the situation or what they need to do or what they truly want you know there's a bit of a mixed bag here you know the moon is it's very much about illusions it's about it's a it's just things are foggy if you think about nighttime you know, if we didn't have street lights, we wouldn't be able to see much. You know, everything's a bit blurry, it's dark, it, it, it's not very clear. And the problem is, is that if we're trying to manifest from that place, we manifest all kinds of things that we don't, again, we don't really want. So, 
there is that mirroring there, but the, you know, in terms of the opposite way around, because you seem very clear on what your standards are, what you expect, what you deserve. And then this person over here, they're very much the opposite. It's like, it, it it feels up and down again. It doesn't feel as stable. It doesn't feel as clear about, you know, what they want, where they're going. And within this situation, what they're trying to do, what they're trying to create, or at the very least, what they should do in order to create something solid here. But I also get fear as well. There's some fear. Because that confusion doesn't necessarily have to be what they want or what they don't want. It can also be, how would you react? What would you do? What would you say? Where are you at? What's going on with you? You know. So in terms of what should I do here, it can be that confusion of I don't know what to do here because I don't really know what's going on with them. I don't really know much about what, what they're doing in their life. I don't really know where their head is that when it comes to me, you know, it feels, feels like that. And we also have confident here as well, but remember it's a blockage. So lacking confidence in themselves, perhaps not feeling the most courageous at this point in their life. They're not feeling, they're not, it's interesting. They're not feeling impulsive they're not feeling like they're ready to take action because they're not sure if their actions are the right move they're not sure that that's what they should do they're not sure if that will grant them what what it is that they want then we've got winter so some of you could be in winter right now in which case again this could be something that's ongoing throughout the winter months but it's also symbolic of being frozen being stood still frozen in fear, right? Not moving, thinking a lot, imagining a lot, feeling a lot, but not acting on it, you know, struggling to act on it. I also feel as well that winter, you know, winter's cold, as we all know. I'm wondering if this person's worried that they would receive a cold reception from you as well, you know, and that's what holds them back. That's the fear. That's the, I'm just not going to act on it because if I if I do, will I get a really icy, cold reception from this person? And I don't, I don't think that's where you are. I don't think that's where you are, especially with this, although this is in the blockage as well. So it could be that you're struggling to tap into emotions right now. You know, it, it, I feel like you're going through a phase where it's almost as if emotions are slowing you down emotions are getting you getting in your way and you need to you need to be logical right now you need to be practical you know and I feel like this person is more in their emotions but they're struggling with the confidence and the ability to turn their feelings into action so talking of action what are you both going to be doing? Okay, so I, I feel like there's going to be movement here. Okay, so I feel like there's going to be communication, some kind of action taken or reunion, right? We have the page of pentacles showing up and we have the uh, six of cups. Now, <laughs> should have mentioned this at the start of the reading. We're stepping into a Mercury retrograde. Remember this. <laughs> should have said this at the beginning of the reading. We are stepping into the Mercury, into Mercury retrograde. It may even be starting today. I believe it was either yesterday, today or tomorrow. It's one of them. Um, so that will be happening throughout Christmas, over the holidays. It will be here for a while. So this would make sense for that. There could be reunions. They could be hearing from people you've not heard from for a while. It's a standard thing with Mercury retrograde. But again... Mercury retrogrades, when things start in Mercury retrograde, it's not that you can't start things. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to say that to you, but there is a belief that if you start something in Mercury retrograde, it's not necessarily going to last. So just bear that in mind. It can be fleeting. Um, but I do think that Mercury retrograde is really good for 
resolutions, for resolving things, for conclusions, for closure. And I think that it can be really good to tie up loose ends. Um, so I feel like you, either you will be giving communication or receiving it. I don't see you giving it. I mean, it could be, but I don't really see that. Because what's interesting to me, I always go on the positioning of the cards as well, is that this person's side is over here. So it's behind you. You're over here somewhere. And like I said, it feels a bit more like your, your focus will be or is elsewhere. You know, you're putting energy elsewhere. You are focused on other things. And it's almost like it feels a bit like a sneak attack. <laughs> is the only way I can describe it. It feels a bit like a sneak attack. You know, it creeps up on you. It's behind you, you know. It sounds a bit a bit creepy and I don't mean it in a creepy way, but it feels a bit like you won't see this coming. Um, you might now, but um, it feels like it happens at an unexpected time or moment. Now, what is interesting is this. So, you know how, you know when something unexpected happens and you freeze temporarily? Like you can't speak, you can't, you can't act, you can't move. Sometimes you just freeze because you're processing. You know, when something really unexpected happens that taps into the emotions, you freeze. You might have a moment like that. Another way of looking at this, though, is that this person perhaps did something in the past that you weren't, you didn't appreciate or hurt you in some way, and it could dredge up some feelings like that for you if a reunion is happening. You know, if you hear from this person, if you receive communication, if you reconnect in some way, which is very possible during this time period and it may dredge that back up again and you may be quite surprised by that because often what can happen is that when you're by yourself you heal and then when you're dealing with other people all this old stuff comes back up again the stuff that you thought you'd healed from and moved past it can come back up again and surprise you and it, it took dealing with someone for that to happen. I feel like you can only heal so much solo before relationships need to step in and help you heal that little bit more, that little bit further. So, yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting time. Now, this person, like I said, not that long ago, they're in a fiery energy. So this is a lot of that. Some of you could be dealing with a fire sign, but we have the Knight of Wands and the King of Wands. Now, if I'm going to show you what it looks like from my angle, you can see why I kind of feel like it's them taking the action, right? It's, I don't know what happens, but I can see like a beeline, this person making a beeline for you. And I don't know what prompts them or what, what suddenly stirs up all of this courage and confidence and impulsive action, but I feel like something happens and it just stirs it up and they, they act on it. And I feel like, yeah, we've got empowered here. Look at that. So whatever confidence they have been missing, they, it, it returns to them. Something surges up inside of them and it's almost like they have to act they get their power back so it's this powerful capable and strong so if something makes them realize or makes them remember I can do this you know or this is what I want to do or this is what I need to do I have to do this so I feel like they're gonna act and then we've got tribe here as well so yeah I feel like this person may feel like you're part of their pack so to speak or part of their tribe or there's something special and unique about this and 
you know, perhaps they're just missing being around you or they, they want to talk to you. There's something about wanting back in, wanting back in. And again, it feels like, it feels to me a little bit like this person might be blowing up other things in their life, recognising that it isn't their tribe or recognising that they've, they don't have the right people around them or, you know, the, the relationships that they've been giving to haven't exactly been very healthy or haven't lasted, have been a bit of a disaster or a bit of a car crash, you know, and so it's a case of I want to move away from that and I want to put in effort into relationships that stabilise me. And again, that comes back to where you are because I feel like you're giving off a very stable uh, energy right now. And so because of that, and that's due to the work and the effort that you've put in, which you should be proud of yourself for. But I think because you've done that and that's what you're giving out now, you know, I feel like that's that's attracting in different energies or energies from the past that you haven't seen or heard from for a while. So I feel like it's going to be an interesting Christmas. Obviously, it is that time of year as well where these things can happen. So, for example, for some of you, you know, you're going home for Christmas. You're going back to where you grew up. You stumble across lots of different people that you grew up with, childhood friends, etc. And you, you have more opportunity to see people like that and to bump into people like that, right? For others of you, this is not like that. And it's not a coincidence and it's actually intentional because this person, like I said, it could be that you go to a party and this person is at that party. They see you and they make a beeline for you. You know, it could be something like that. But I feel like for most of you, it's going to be just a feels like a bit of a light bulb moment that this person has. I don't know where that comes from, but I feel like this person just suddenly gets a surge of energy and they act on it what you want to do with that I think completely is up to you I do think it's an opportunity for you to resolve any old feelings that never really got resolved um, I think it's an opportunity for you to release the past if if this is something that happens but beyond that it's really up to you and what you want and the position that you're in at the time. Okay, so let's pull you some advice. <laughs> exactly. You're glowing. This is what I've been saying, right? You're like a magnet over the next however long, at least over the Mercury retrograde period, you're a magnet, right? And it says you are glowing from the inside out. So choose to feel good about yourself. You will only attract positive people, circumstances and opportunities by doing so. So again, you've raised your standards. That's very attractive to people when you do that. It, it you know, all the things that we think attracts people or maybe I should be more specific attracts the experiences that we actually want to have it doesn't come from anything external it doesn't come from anything that we do superficially it's all inside and we all have little antennas that pick up on different signals that we are completely oblivious to majority of the time but often when we are taking care of ourselves it shows on the outside more than anything else we can do superficially when we start to be kinder to ourselves when we start to look after our health and surround ourselves with positive people and experiences it shows it visibly shows and I think that that's what you have been doing and are well on your way to accomplishing and that is going to be extremely attractive to people which is why you could be drawing in certain people and certain experiences into your life so yeah I, d I don't know if this is good news to you or bad news I think it will completely depend on your situation 
but I think it's th- there's an opportunity coming in. What you do with it is up to you. But I think this is just explaining why it's happening in the first place. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there, guys, but I really hope that was helpful. It was really nice talking to you all again. I'll be back to do another YouTube, at least one, probably more than one, um, before I go off for two weeks. But like I said, if you're interested in a private reading, the details are below. Um, and please get in touch as soon as possible if you are wanting one before that two week break. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there, but yeah, I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.